right, welcome to another episode of Point Taken with Rena Bindi. Today, we have a very, very special guest who's also a personal friend of mine, Dr. Paige Mott with Discovery Life Chiropractic. Uh, this woman not only does human chiropractic care, but pet care as well. And she was the instigator, is the instigator of SB18, 239, which is a law that was, it was signed into law on May of 2018, and it gives direct access for owners to take animals to chiropractors. Today, we're going to talk about pets and signs to look for, for dogs to see when maybe they should go in for some chiropractic care. And oh, Paige, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much, Rena, for having me, uh, especially about a topic that I'm, is so dear and passionate to me and to my heart. So That's Sophie. That's Sophie, this, huh? This is Miss Sophie. Oh, hi, Sophie. Sophie, yeah. look, it's Zugo. <laughs> Zugo, hello, sweetie. Hi. Oh, yeah, Miss oh, Sophie God. was actually, when she was born, uh, she couldn't walk and she had had a birth trauma. And um, she was bred to show. She's a grand champion Yorkie. I know you can't tell, but um, the breeder brought her to me so that I could uh, try to get her to walk so that she could show her. And I got her walking great, but just not show ring quality. So they asked me if I would home her. And yeah, I said, hey, why not? What's a five pound add to my mix of uh, my gaggle of four leggings? <sighs> Well, she's precious. I'm obviously a huge fan of Yorkies and Sophie. I didn't realize that she had issues from early on though. I remember when you had uh, added her to the family, but I didn't realize that there was like that whole story behind her as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's she's fascinating. just it's a chiropractic, uh, you know, most people don't think of a uh, chiropractic when their animal is in distress. And I, I've had several uh, young puppies that have had birth trauma that I've been able to help with chiropractic, but it isn't just limited to them. It's um, obviously wonderful. It adds life to the years of your pet, quality of life for the senior animals. It's just amazing what chiropractic can do for dogs and horses too. But we're gonna, we're gonna focus on canines today. I, uh, okay, like I, I love chiropractic care. I love going in and I believe in a holistic uh, chiropractic lifestyle myself. I just, I had never heard of pets getting chiropractic treatment before. How did you even learn how to do this? Like, where did this come from? Well, we'll give you a little bit of chiropractic history. Um, we've been adjusting animals since the advent of chiropractic in the 1890s, okay? And actually we would adjust animals as chiropractors to really prove our, what we were doing in the animal breeds as it translates to humans. And for those of you that are not familiar with chiropractic, chiropractic is all about the nerve system. You know, we think of pain uh, being part of that. And yes, it is. But most people are shocked to find out that less than 10% of the nerves even feel pain. 90% of the nerves in any living being uh, coordinate function. And so um, know that an adjusting animals is not a new thing. It's been around since the 1800s. Wow. Uh, but for me personally, I always knew that I would be um, I have a love for animals. There are pictures of me in chiropractic school where I was palpating my dog on my adjusting bench. I always knew I was going to work with animals. And then I had the opportunity in 2010 to attend a formal program at, through, run through Parker College of Chiropractic in Dallas, Texas, where I went through extensive training specific for dogs and horses. And I became ABCA board certified for animal chiropractic in that year as well. It's an independent board exam. Excuse me. I apologize. I can't turn off my office phone. So I apologize. That's okay. That. Totally okay. But uh, not just any chi chiropractic on animals is very different than it is for humans. And so it's important that we understand if you're choosing a chiropractor, that you make sure that they have this additional training. 
and that they're board certified. So I got mine through the American Veterinary Chiropractic Association. I, I've, I'm dying to know what some of the differences are. Because I mean, for me, a skeleton is a skeleton and the skeletal structure would be similar in my mind, but I'm uneducated in this. I have no idea. So well, Ashley, thank you for asking. Okay, so we as humans, we are bipeds. That means we walk on two feet, right? Uh -huh. Unfortunately, the quadrupeds, meaning they walk on four, are weight bearing on four. So that changes the whole dynamic. And actually their anatomy is very different as well. Um, hmm. in, in other words, humans, uh, so we need to study the differences, but their weight bearing is, is a key factor. Huh. So I would assume that with, with the pet, because they have four legs that their like spine would need to be adjusted differently in the lower and the upper. As a human that might be more straight, I'm just guessing here. Yeah, actually, if, if an animal, a quadruped is um, subluxated or their vertebrae aren't moving through their proper range of motion, no, it impacts the entire system. And that's because they're weight bearing on four. So think of humans, we walk weight bear on two, we can compensate and adapt, but they can't. So if there's a problem in the neck, it's going to impact the back end. If there's a problem in the back end, it's going to impact the neck. And things that most owners, they think it's just because of old age, they're like, oh, my, um, my dog won't jump up like it used to. Right. Or it, it, it will hesitate going up or downstairs or it, 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 he or she is slow getting up or down. I mean, there's a number of things. Um, I have actually taken care of dogs that were paralyzed and they walk in paralyzed in the back end and they walk out like a drunken sailor, but they walk out. <laughs> and wow. with continued care, we're able to give them back to full function. But they must be caught in time. Yeah. I got chills. I just got chills all over thinking about, like, I mean, this is, this is phenomenal. Like, I didn't realize how important this is. I mean, I know for me, it's important. I have never taken Zugo to go to go get a, uh, an adjustment. And it's something that I've been thinking about recently. I mean, he's obviously amazing and he's a five pound Yorkie. Uh, for him in particular, I know you talked about hesitation on stairs. Um, he's obviously not paralyzed, but for a dog like him that runs, okay, he runs with me. We'll go three miles a day, no problem. And if I'm feeling lazy, I get on my Zugo electric bike. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have an e-bike brand now too, the Zugo bike. And I will just torque that thing and he will have to run and keep up with me on it. Um, but I I've thought about him running on the concrete and running around. Can he come in and get regular treatments? What, what should I be looking for specifically with a dog that's healthier? Oh, absolutely. Because the sooner we start care, the better. Uh -huh. So um, basically you're looking for, uh, we're trained as the chiropractors. And when, when people bring their dogs to me, I train the owner what to look for. Mm -hmm. So we look at movement distortion patterns. We look at striding. We look at lack of motion. I mean, and, and so I can show the owners when they come in what to look for. The reality is only a qualified uh, chiropractor can teach you that. But uh, there's things that people don't think of. Um, I'm going to talk about Zoe, okay? Yeah, Zoe please do. Is, yeah, Zoe is a bulldog uh, that is a puppy. Mm -hmm. And Zoe was brought to me because Zoe was leaking urine. Aww. And the owner was having to change the pads like 10 times a day, the laundry. She took it to the veterinarians and the veterinarians did their workup, took x-rays, everything. And they were suggesting that the dog needed an MRI and spinal surgery. And the owner was like, I don't have that kind of money. So somehow she found me and brought Zoe in. And with some directed chiropractic care, we were able to fully recover Zoe's urinary system. Now, why is that? because the nerves from the lower back impact the detrusor muscles. And that's a big fancy term for the muscles that keep open and shut the bladder. Uh -huh. And so he has fully recovered. Other wow. things to look for are incessant licking. You know, have you ever had a dog like 
chew on their paw, what do we think? We think that's allergies and it might be, but it could be chiropractic because when uh, that numbness and tingling happens in an animal, of course, what are they gonna try to do? They're gonna try to bite it to make that sensation go away. Um, hesitancy to play with their toys. I've even had a cat and, and, I, and I have to tell you, I do adjust cats, but under veterinary supervision, that's the way the law is written for cats. Um, but there was a cat that was not eating and went through all the blood work and the veterinary workup and they couldn't find out why this cat would not eat. And guess what? It had a problem with its jaw. So we found a problem in its jaw and, start, and, and we worked on it and the cat ate like a fiend after that. So um, these are other things to look for that could be chiropractic. But it's always a good idea to get a healthy dog checked and know what to look for. And I, ha I have a wonderful literature that I can hand to the patients about, it could be just like they're not acting themselves. They're, they're winded when they work out or they're kind of, they don't want to play anymore or um, they're more winded. Um, we talked about difficulty going up or downstairs, uh, not jumping onto couches, maybe not even jumping down couches. Um, any diagnosed condition from the veterinarian like degenerative disc disease or arthritis, they respond so awesome to chiropractic. That's amazing. I, uh, Zuko and I will be by next week. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and Zuko and Sophie can finally meet. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like uh, we talked about, you know, any type of um, limping, uh, dragging the paw, you know, dragging a paw a little bit. You'll see that they get cuts on the top. That's because they can't feel their back end. Um, and I'm going to tell you any stressful situation, mm -hmm. many people, I, I see dogs get super stressed when their mommies and daddies leave town and they go to be board, you know, to the boarding, or maybe they're babysat by a pet sitter and they freak out and it causes them emotional stress and chiropractic helps with that. Uh, recently I was sent a dog that had insomnia <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> and the owner was driven to come because the dog was keeping her up all night. After one adjustment, Lucy slept oh. I mean, I mean, it's funny, but it's not. But it, I mean, like I could see it because Zuko, oh my gosh, if he was up all night, I would never sleep. Oh my gosh. I didn't, <laughs> that's crazy, Paige. That's, I mean, this is so awesome, like crazy awesome. I had no idea how powerful pet chiropractic care can be. And all of the different, I mean, we're not, I mean, this is probably just the tip of the iceberg, but uh, hearing, cause Zuko gets anxiety. He like, so we have friends, Dr. Bender um, has a girlfriend, Roxy, and we go spend plenty of time over at their place, but he gets anxiety when we leave town and my husband and I travel a lot. I mean, we love traveling internationally, like at least once a year. And we, <laughs> we don't take Zuko with us, you know, we're not going to take her to the Philippines. Um, well, but she he had to be in quarantine once she got there. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to take him there. Yeah, but it's it's stressful for him. And hearing that chiropractic care could help him, uh, maybe because he gets digestive issues afterwards, he'll vomit uh, a couple days later. Like sometimes it's it's bile, but he'll have lack of appetite, and he's he's like a little anxiety ridden dog. Totally, he's so used to being with us and. Well, RJ, do you know why um, he has those visceral responses, meaning the not eating, the diarrhea, the throwing up when he's stressed? Do you know why that is? We're, we have to leave him. We have to leave him at home. He does. He's losing his pack or his mom and dad. He wants sure. to be with us all the time. And it puts him in a state of fight or flight. Ah. So it's about the nerve system. So when, when he's in a state stuck, stuck in what we call sympathetic or fight or flight, no, that's what a chiropractic adjustment does is it puts homeostasis back in the nerve system. Wow. So yes, it does impact digestion, right? So 
And um, I have, uh, I don't know, you said you go, you live the chiropractic lifestyle. Has your chiropractor ever given you a chart of the nerve system in your body and showed you where the nerves come from and go to? It's been a while. I had that education a few years back, which was amazing. And I know exactly where my, it's in my neck and then here and then here. And I was given exercises to do, which were phenomenal. Uh, thank goodness too, because last thing I want is my sciatica issues to flare up again. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, anyway, they have nerve systems too. And we actually, um, I always give my clients nerve charts so that they can understand. It's not only how the dog functions and walks and feels, but how their body functions. And, and, and again, it, it's more of an educational piece, but a lot of people don't relate digestive issues per se to chiropractic but they are related. That's an, I heard allergies can be uh, cured with chiropractic care too. Can, 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 uh, well, this isn't about dogs. This is more about cats. Do, do you think that allergies or in, infections of sort of allergic value could be from lack of chiropractic care in cats and dogs? Let's go, let's go back to that. Remember we talked about the fight or flight yeah. Okay. So you, you spoke of, uh, what did you say? Allergies? What, what was the other thing you said? Uh, allergies. Our cat has like an autoimmune disorder is what we've been told. Beautiful so, cat. Yeah. Gorgeous cat. So again, let's go back to the nerve system. When you're stuck in fight or flight, that suppresses the immune system or in your case makes the immune system more hyper, it's the body's attacking itself. That's what mm. autoimmune means. So when there's an imbalance in the nerve system that has a direct impact on the immune system overall. So you can have either decreased immunity or overreactive, which would be an allergy, right? Or an autoimmune condition. Now I don't treat for this. As a chiropractor, I remove interference from the nerve system and allow innate wisdom to express itself. So certainly I do not practice veterinary medicine. I am an animal chiropractor. I am taught what to identify what is and what is not chiropractic. I like to collaborate with the, the veterinarians because after all, you know, sometimes we need medical care. I mean, let's face it, but we got to collaborate to work together for the benefit of the animal. This is fascinating. I, I had no idea about most of this and this has just always been such a, ever since I heard that you did pet chiropractic care a few years back. I, I, you know, it's just one of those things that had always been in the back of my mind that I needed more education on because I, I don't know until I ask questions, right? Mm -hmm. You just don't know until the question is asked and then the education starts rolling out. I'm thinking of all different types of like problems that pets of mine have had in the past that maybe could have been solved through pet chiropractic care. And I love that you work with uh, the veterinarian because then you have both sources collaboratively figuring out what could be wrong with the cat based on, or dog based on blood work and past history. And, and if it were to solve the issue, like how miraculous. Well, how that? many issues that, don't respond to traditional medicine, and we'll talk the true of humans and animals, that a simple chiropractic adjustment is, you know, it restores that balance in the body so the body can heal itself. So uh, I can tell straight. Let me tell you about my first official dog patient. Can I tell you about this? I would love to hear the story. Please okay. tell me. Okay, well, this was back in 2010 when I was mm -hmm. actually training. And this was back when people did not have direct access to animal chiropractic care. So essentially a veterinarian actually had to refer the animal to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I was like, yes, this vet veterinarian referred me my first patient and it was a 15 year old Lhasa Apsa. So at the time I didn't have a place in my office to adjust animals. So I went to their house and I show up and this dog is weak in the back end. I mean, it's almost bald, no hair, uh -huh. um, tail 
Tails down is a big one. You know how Alaska Ops' tail is supposed to be up and over its back? Well, it was like flopping around, dangling in the wind. And I was literally given the referral because it was weak in the back end. So I looked at the owner. I said, how long has that tail been down? She goes, I'm not worried about that tail. That tail's been down for two to three years. And I said, okay, but... So I'm still new at Animal Chiropractic, and I delivered a chiropractic adjustment to this Vasa Opsa. And that tail went from down all the way up to over its <sighs> back. In an instant, the, the owner was like, where have you been? <laughs> anyway, I, of course we had to do follow-up visits with this dog. So fast forward three to six months later, I can't remember because this was back in 2010. That dog grew back its entire coat of hair. Whoa. And that dog lived to be 17. Oh man. So I got little goosebumps again. Like that's such a beautiful story. Yeah. Animals just respond. When we remove interference from the nerve system, the body does amazing stuff. God, that's how God designed us was to be self-healing. I'm awestruck right now. I that story is just and so touching like people people don't know until they know <laughs> like what you're doing for animals and being an advocate for them getting laws in place so they can come directly to you instead of needing to go through the veterinary system as well is wonderful because i'm after our conversation just 30 minutes in i'm like yeah zugo's coming in got to make an appointment with you this next week and stop in and have you take a look at him. I don't think, I don't think there's anything like wrong with him you other than his, you, see it. you don't want to wait exactly. till you see it. because exactly. dogs by nature are just they, to survive. They hide stuff. Yes. You that? That's part of it. They can't let the herd know that anything's wrong with the pack. Know that yes. anything's wrong with them. They hide it. He no. does. He hot until he's really hurt. And then he comes running up to me and like cuddles up in my arms. It's like, mommy, I got a boo-boo if he stung me. <laughs> like he, he, unless it's severe pain, like when he had that rattlesnake bite, like we, we don't know that he's hurt. We don't know that he's injured until they're like severe signs. And we have to learn to look for the slight differences in personality changes in him. And that's exactly why I want to bring him in for preventative maintenance and preventative care. I'm going in, I'm getting adjusted weekly or every other week at the, at the like longest time period. So why am I not taking Zugo in my, my million dollar dog, <laughs> my little celebrity dog who's internationally known. Like exactly. Why wouldn't I take him in? Exactly. And you know, something a lot of people don't understand and um, is their collars. I want to get your audience to understand this. The collars are atrocious for them. Okay. And an improperly fitted harness can also be equally as devastating mm. to them. So um, that, that's another thing, you know, we want to educate, you know, what the proper use of, uh, you want to make sure that you have a good proper fit on, on the harnesses because they can create damage, but think about it. They get to the end of their chain and what happens, you know, they jerk their neck, right? And that causes a problem in the neck. Now they may, they can't tell you, mommy, my neck hurts, <laughs> right? We, we'd think they'd stop pulling, but they don't. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the neat thing about a five pounder is they can't pull very hard. Now, my yellow labs, on the other hand, they can drag me down the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. could, could you give me some advice? Give us some advice for the harness fitting? Like, should it be a snug fit? Should it be a two finger fit? Like what's going on with the harness? Okay. The main thing about the harness is you want to make sure that it doesn't impair their ability to fully extend or flex their arms so that they can get through their full stride. Okay, and I'm trying to use my human body to show you what I mean. But if they can't stride properly, it's going to impact them. So too tight is really bad. Too loose equally as bad because that can cause a jerk at the end of the tension on the. And I don't like retractable leashes, just saying. That's, you know, basically um, th that comes to mind. 
but and and also too um i'm a big i have people need to keep their toenails uh the animal's nails clipped in other words um a dog if they're if you could hear clicking their nails are too long it's the equivalent of you wearing high heels all day long oh. they need their their weight bearing should be on the pads or the paws okay um, that's real critical too. And hardwood floors are a disaster that doggies wipe out on those and get injured. Oh. So, you know, it happens. That's why we want to get regular checkups. If you have hardwood floors in your home, you're not going to go change all that. But if they have a wipeout, they need to come see me, you know? I hadn't even thought about that. The, um, the hardwood floor aspect with the nails, like it, it, Zugo, if one of his nails gets too long, I'm like, oh, we're going back in and we're going to make sure that gets taken care of. That's one of my pet peeves is if his nails are just a little bit too long, I will take him back to our groomer time. Like after two weeks, I'm like, okay, you guys, he needs to, these need to be cut back again. And by the, way, Zugo's groomer, by the way, Zugo's groomer does a great job. Um, that's, that's where Sophie goes. Now I know she doesn't look as sassy as Zugo. She's more of the scruffy look kind of like, um, Yorkie, you know, versus the perfect look. So it, thank you. Dogs has been wonderful. Uh, they've, they've been great in helping us like figure out issues that Zugo might've had. Um, like we didn't realize he had ear mites at one point, like, Oh, he's got ear mites. Took him to the vet. He's got ear mites. But little things the groomer actually notices prior to like the vet sometimes because we are taking him to the vet and dogs, they're, they're top notch uh, groomer out here in Loveland, Colorado, for those who are listening. They've been taking Zugo for all of his grooms since we first got him. He had phobias and issues because he's a rescue. Uh, they worked him through all of his phobias and they, they can do so many different styles of grooming for Yorkies, everything from Asian fusion, traditional. She gets. gets. She does until she gets too matted and then we have to shave her down <laughs> and start all over again. <laughs> that, you know, I'm glad we brought up groomers because uh, that's another thing. Um, grooming can be hard. Um, they can get subluxated in grooming um it's stressful it can be stressful for them um and also you know they have that little chain that's on the bench and I mean I know that the groomers do their best but some dogs like to try to take off and run off that table with that chain on their neck I mean so I always tell clients when always schedule me after you get the dog groomed and that's not because I'm worried about the dog being dirty it's because I want to take care of the stressors that they had from being groomed so there you have it Oh, that would be, that'd be so symbiotic to just drive out to dogs and then have an appointment with you on the way home. So he'll look good and feel good. I'm, I'm mapping out the rest of our future in this conversation <laughs> right now. It's just, it's so beautiful. This is, this is great. Yeah. Oh, Zugo, you're going to get to go see Paige. Huh? Yeah. RJ is, I keep getting distracted. Is that a skeleton behind you to the left of you? Yep. That is my, my animal skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, cool. I, I, being a chiropractor, I've been looking at that. Like, what is that? Yeah. I, I have a, a dog skeleton here. Now it is um, a model. So don't mm -hmm. be freaked out, but I have it mainly for educational purposes. Yeah. I'm going to get to come meet your skeleton. I'm actually going to name this one. I haven't thought of a name for it yet. I, I, I thought I was going to be a paleontologist when I was younger. And I, I loved bones. I loved dinosaurs. And so when I, when I found this, I was like, you're coming home with me. Haven't named him yet or her. Not sure what, but we'll, we'll work on that. That's for sure. I just yeah. figured it's very fitting since I help chiropractors to have a skeletal structure in the background as well, because, well, it brings me joy. So it should bring other people. Well, it was bringing me joy. So I, I <laughs> mean to go off topic, but that That's is fine. a chiropractic right there. So yes. <laughs> I love uh, we could talk about whatever we want. I yeah. mean, it's um, wonderful though. I love, okay. I, I want to share another story. Oh, please do. Oh, please. 
Yeah. Um, okay. It's about Diamond. And Diamond was a baby lamb, is a baby, well, a big lamb now. And it, it's in birthed. And we call it Diamond in the Rough. And when mom, <laughs> when, when Diamond was born, he had birth trauma again. Oh. And his neck was stuck sideways. I mean, just wow. totally stuck. And he couldn't walk. He, he tried to get up and he'd fall over and it sighted. For whatever reason, the family called the veterinarians from CSU out there and they said, put that thing down. Aww. And the family was like, no. So, you know, I got permission to work on it because the vets were like, whatever. <laughs> you know, and I tell you what, I have permission that that diamond is still alive and I have permission to go by and see diamond anytime I want. Diamond is full grown now <laughs> and is kind of a pet because they didn't want to um, breed it and they mm -hmm. couldn't slaughter it for meat. So it's like their pet. So anyway. Oh, well, that's so sweet. <laughs> and my best patient of all is uh, I, I have adjusted a Timberline wolf. And oh, that's uh, a big, big dog. Spirit. Spirit is down in near Colorado Springs. Spirit is a rest, uh, not a rescue. What do they call it when they put him in a sanctuary, you know, with other wolves, a wolf sanctuary. And Spirit takes um, people on hikes. Uh, you know, it's a tour thing, right? Uh -huh. The way they found me was one of my colleagues was on vacation with her family and they went on one of these hikes and the chiropractor was like, you know, me, that, that, Wolf could probably use a chiropractic adjustment, and they gave him my name. And um, sure enough, Spirit is still under regular chiropractic care, and so are some of the other some of the other wolves in the the group. So yes, <sighs> because of the far drive, I referred it um, Spirit to one of my students mm -hmm. so that they, he could have continuity of care. Because for me to drive two and a half hours and say spirit might be in need, I went ahead and referred him to a qualified one of the students that I taught chiropractic to. Are you teaching other chiropractors right now about pet chiropractic care still? Do you have a I, school? The, and currently, I am not. But in the past, I have um, taught both chiropractors and veterinarians animal chiropractic. And so being a teacher, you know, who has good skill sets and who doesn't. So you know who to refer to <laughs> and so on. So anyway, yeah. So I referred him, um, spirit to one of my students. What a phenomenal mentor. I bet you've been to these people too. I mean, you have the heart to serve and to give unconditionally and just, just knowing that you're helping other people pass along your passion. I bet man, I'd love to meet those people too and hear some of their stories. That's well, I have to give credit. I, I have mentors, right? Mm -hmm. I had people that taught me and, um, you know, I've done some advanced work with one of my, um, with Dr. Jay Comeric and mm -hmm. he is an amazing animal chiropractor. And, um, yeah, I, I, I've worked with him and I continue to learn, you know, you never know everything. So I'm always, looking to learn more. How can I help? How can I do more? So you've been a, an incredible advocate in our community and an all around good human. <laughs> I'm sure every pet would say that for sure. Uh, is there, so are there any types of animals that you do not work on? Like that would not be a good fit for chiropractic care or? No, I'm The answer is no. But remember the direct access piece, my law mm -hmm. covers dogs and equids. So to define that, that is a horse, a mule, a donkey, or a zebra. So if you have a zebra that needs an adjustment, give me a call. Now I can work on the other breeds or all the other species with um, collaborate under a veterinarian. So I would ah, have, yeah. That makes, you, you had mentioned this earlier. It makes more sense now. I was like, we can bring you a guinea pig, you know, <laughs> can we bring you a bird? I have no I have idea. I have adjusted a chicken and a llama. 
that was <laughs> that was on the sly in the back country. Oh gosh, this is on tape. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, the poor thing, you know how they put the packs on the llamas and the poor thing they had that waited like this and this poor llama, I was like, and it was my llama that, for the trip. And I was like, I'm just gonna fix this. <laughs> ben, <laughs> let me but, help you. And then we can go along our way. <laughs> Well, we needed to balance out the bags for sure, because that was more ergonomically correct for the llama. Um, chickens, it's really interesting. Do you know a chicken has up to 18 vertebra in their neck? Yeah, I don't know anything about chickens. I know that they <laughs> lay eggs. <laughs> yeah, well, their anatomy is very different. So I stick to primarily um, dogs and equids. Awesome. That's phenomenal. I just thank you so much for your time today, Paige. Uh, we're pretty much out of time at the moment. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Oh, um, well, actually, I would like to share if you have any questions at all, please put up, you know, how to contact me and I'm happy to answer them. They can call me. Um, I'm here to serve and I'm looking to see animal chiropractic become more mainstream and it is and it's through word of mouth because that's how the word gets out have you heard of animal chiropractic well now you have so real quick because a lot of people are listening to this as well could you just tell them where they could find you on facebook linkedin sure website? okay um well i'm discover life chiropractic that's my facebook page um, my website is discoverlifechiropractic.com mm -hmm. and my office phone number is 970-622-0075. Awesome. So if you would like, please jump onto Facebook and follow Dr. Paige Mott. Uh, she's phenomenal. She's always posting a lot of relevant, great content, uh, whether it's about animals chiropractic care for pets or people. And she has an all around holistic outlook for chiropractic care. So she doesn't just treat the symptom, she treats the person and the actual issue that's happening. Uh, thank you once again, Paige, for being here with us today. I hope you have an incredible week. I will be seeing you next week. With Zugo oh, sure. well, we're going to get Sophie dialed up to meet Zugo. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Thank you so much for having me today. You're welcome.